Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I am doing an unboxing video of the Magicians, Martyrs and Mad Men Tarot. I am very nervous about this. This is another deck by Travis McHenry, who did the infamous Hieronymus Bosch Tarot, which you can find the unboxing to here. I will be reviewing that one shortly because it did take me by surprise. But if you've watched the unboxing video, you will know it is unlike any tarot deck I've ever, ever, ever seen before. So I'm scared and excited to see what's in this one. If you're new to my channel, my name's Hannah. I'm known as the Suburban Witch. I'm a professional tarot reader, astrologer, and witch, obviously. And I host the Witch Talks podcast as well. Aside from all of the wonderful content that I put out here on YouTube, you can also find book reviews, really detailed blog posts on lots of things like using crystal dildos, spirit guides, all the good stuff you can find over on my blog. Now, as with most of the decks that I unbox, I don't look them up beforehand. I have no idea what I'm going to find in here. You're getting my unfiltered, raw opinion. All right, first things first, the, the box has some pretty gold detailing. It's like got some gold foiling on it. I love the font. I love the feel of the box. It is a mix of like these parts are glossy, but this part is matte. It's a nice sensation. It feels really sturdy. And I don't feel like it's going to fall apart if I throw it in my handbag. Although over use, over time, that might change. <laughs> Alright, we've got our little tabby tab guy. Boop. <sighs> Do I look at the guidebook first? Because... I know from experience that he makes a lot of changes. Let's look at the size of the, let's look at the size of the cards and the card stock and the back of the cards, then the guidebook, then the cards themselves. Does that sound good? For reference, that is the inside of the box. All right, we got our paper little slippy thing, which is good. It does feel like it's got plastic coating on it though, so not so good. And I'm sure you got a glint of that. These are gold edging. They feel sticky. They feel really sticky and I don't like it. All right. That, like the cards themselves seem to move pretty well, but just the edges feel literally sticky. Maybe just cause it's new. I don't now, an issue I had with the last deck was it came out of the box bowed, the whole deck of cards, and it's still like that. I can almost see a little bit of that with these, just slightly, not anywhere near as bad. All right, the, the sizing's good. Oh, it, it's thick. Like that is holding on by a thread. Oh my goodness. I did not do my nails before this. I am so sorry. It looks terrible. <laughs> I am a mum and it is school holidays. I do not have time. And I'm filming this literally the week of Christmas. I gotta redo them. All right, so deck size feels good. I'm gonna show you the back of the cards. I love the blues. Blues are one of my favorite colors. Blues are, blue is, dark blue, like indigo. I love indigo. It's not my favorite color right now. That would be emerald green, but indigo comes in second. <sighs> Let's see what we're in for, guys. Did he illustrate this? I'm not sure. All right, so starting off, each card represents a literal person in history, from what I can tell, that you it gives you an opportunity to connect with them. I have a similar deck. It's an oracle deck. It's called the Saints and Mystics Reading Cards. 
I love that deck. There is a review that you can watch. Maybe this, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's Rockpool as well. So as in the publishing company, I can't see it from here on my shelf. So Magicians, Martyrs and Mad Men, similar to Saints and Mystics, perhaps. Not sure yet. Sometimes these people were not very nice. Yay. <laughs> I like this little note. A few of the personalities I have chosen will touch a nerve and some readers may question my choice of who has been included and who has been left out. Oh, I'm so excited. Who is in there? While I would love to include everyone who was branded a witch, warlock, saint or serial killer, there is a limit to how much can be written. Okay, okay, okay. As a big white bald guy writing about persons of colour, I tried to be sensitive in word choices and did my best to honour cultural traditions. Thank you, Travis McHenry, who, by the way, I have reached out to for an interview on the Witch Talks podcast. So if you like his decks, if you like what he does, I'm hoping to get him on for season three. All right, come on. Let's get to the point where it talks about who's who and if he's made changes. I'm just going to do a flick through and I'll come right back. All right, guys, we are in the clear a little bit, a little bit. I would be surprised if he didn't make any changes, but the changes he've made, he's made seem very minimal in comparison to the Hieronymus Bosch tarot. Only flipped through the major arcana. The first thing that we notice is everything has the same names as the major arcana. Okay. So there is all the major arcanas correctly named, which makes it way easier, but we have three lovers and they're all numbered card six, but there is a, the lovers and it is female and female, the lovers, male and female and the lovers, male and male. So I, whilst I don't think we need to show all aspects of that, because that makes the lovers feel really sexualized in a way, like representation is good. I don't, I'm at war in my brain right now. Representation is good. But I also don't see the lovers as a card of actual love. That's more the two of cups for me. So that just could be me. It's more a card of choice. I mean, hell, put a bloody orgy on there and make it a choice in who you go with. I don't know. But that's the only change he's done in the majors, at least. Now let's look at the minors, which if you remember the Hieronymus Bosch, he created seven suits instead of four. Please don't do that again. Please. There's no write up in the beginning to tell me why there's been a change in suits. So I presume there's been no change in suits. I see cups. I see pentacles. I see swords. I see wands. Oh my gosh, this, why, why am I disappointed? <laughs> why? I was expecting weird and I didn't get so much weird. And P.S. I hope you don't mind. I am trialing a new way of filming these with an up above me camera, but I'm using a tripod and I'm sure you can see my laptop and my, the cord and all the things and just, it's fine, right? That's fine. That's fine. I'm sure that's fine. Tell me it's fine. I don't, how do people get these glorious setups? How? Because I haven't figured it out yet. So let's go through these cards. Am I starting from the end? Oh my God. So let's go through these cards. I'm just going to do a full flip through of all of them. And I guess I'll stop when something piques my interest. Am I filming on this? Yes. <laughs> Good. And I'm going to guess that I'm not going to know all of these people. So we've James Douglas, the fool. Faust is the magician. Marie Laveau, the high priestess. <laughs> Elizabeth Bathory, the empress. Oh my God. You know, um, about 10, 12 years ago, I found this really cool Etsy account and she made perfumes based on horrible people in history. And she used to have a Bathory perfume and I bought it. I loved it. <sighs> I wonder if she's still out there. The Emperor is Nero. Trax. The Hierophant Tomas de Torquemada. I don't know who that is. I'm guessing the guidebook will give you a full little write-up on each people, which is kind of cool. I like that. The lovers. Here we go. So we've got the female, female lovers. Eva Carrier and Juliette Bisson. The lovers male and female. Evita and Juan Perón. And the lovers male and male. Sergius and Bacchus. Peter Stump is strength. Travis McHenry did the images himself because I can't see a 
illustrator on there, but they're nice. I like them. The Hermit is Edward Kelly. Yep. Will of Fortune, John D. Interesting. Justice, Matthew Hopkins. Matthew Hopkins, was he the, the witch trial guy from Salem? Matthew Hopkins. Oh my god, I could have just looked in the freaking guidebook, Hannah. Yeah, Witchfinder General, but not, not the Salem one. I knew I knew the name. The Hanged Man, Gongo Lutete. Oh, they're a little sticky. Death Jack the Ripper. This is a cool deck, guys. Temperance, Angeline Tubbs, The Devil, Delph Delphine Lalori. Oh, oh, shivers. Evil, 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 evil woman. H.H. H. Holmes is the tower. The star is Mary the First. Grigori Rasputin is the moon. Marquis de Sade is the sun. I'm probably pronouncing some of these wrong. Just ignore me. Okay. Judgment is the Bender family. The world, Alistair Crowley. So these look like digital images. I hope they're not AI. Would it say? Would it say? Ah, ignore me. About the illustrator. Why is the illustrator not listed on the front of this deck? I have no idea. Kristen Gottberg is a Venezuelan artist with a passion for digital design. She has had almost a decade of experience illustrating everything from children's books to government publications to Mad Men Tarot's. <laughs> okay. Ace of Cups, Agatha of Sicily, Two of Cups, Katarina Herzfelder, Herzeldorf, Herzeldorfer. Three of Cups, Margareta Laurenti. Four of Cups, Franz Mesmer. I don't know most of these people. Five of Cups, Agnes Berner. Whoop. Oh, so sticky. Six of Cups, Nicholas Flamel. Harry Houdini, Seven of Cups. Cool, cool, cool. Thomas Baker, Eight of Cups. Okay, I'm, I've gone out of tarot brain and I've gone into just cool people in history brain. I'm not even looking at the images. Get your head in the game. Um, Alexander Pierce, Nine of Cups. I mean, I don't get the smugness vibes from the Nine of Cups. All right, tarot brain on. <laughs> Ten of Cups, Sawney Bean Clan. Okay, I, again, I'm gonna have to read up on all of these. I feel like this requires more research. This is just an unboxing. When I do the review is when I will have actually used it, read through the What's My Who's It guidebook and all of that jazz. Knight of Cups, Martin Ocelotl. Love was seen is Queen of Cups, King of Cups, Ed Edward Teach. Ace of Pentacles, Lavinia Fisher. I don't know any of these. I'm still reading them out in case you want to know and can't read them. Two of Pentacles, Anne Odelia, Mr. Barr. Three of Pentacles, Christoph Heisman. Four of Pentacles, Sixie, Chixie, Kixie. Five of Pentacles, Donna Party. Six of Pentacles, Wayne Ockers. Seven of Pentacles, La Quintrala. Oh, sticky, sticky. Eight of Pentacles, William de Soules. Nine of Pentacles, Don Pedro Jaramillo. Jaramillo. Ten of Pentacles, interesting. Helen Duncan, why has she got a coin coming out of her nose? Page of Pentacles, Samuel Little McGregor Mathers. Knight is Solaris. I'm, I'm glad we haven't made the big changes. It makes it easier. Queen of Pentacles, Katarina Dish. I don't know any of these people. Ratu, Udre, Udre for King of Pentacles. I'm going to continue on as I have been. Ace of Swords, Reynald of Chatillon. Two of Swords, Thomas More. Three of Swords, Ivan the Terrible. Like, I know Ivan, Ivan the Terrible, I know. Um, I mean, the swords are pretty brutal because they're like sword swords. Ace of Swords, Two of Swords. Okay. <laughs> I mean... Two of Swords is given Three of Swords energy, but Three of Swords is also given Three of Swords energy. Four of Swords. Okay. Johannes Kelpius. Francois Lonnais is Five of Swords. That's giving Five of Wands. Six of Swords. RMS Titanic. I didn't realize the Titanic was a person. Magicians, Martyrs, and Madmen. What, what's the Titanic, Travis? What is the, t is it a magician? Is it a martyr? 
is it a madman? Would have been better to have like, I don't know, the main engineer or something. Uh, the main guy that designed it. I don't know. Seven of Swords, Daria Nikolaevna, Nikolai, Nikolaevna Saltikova. Eight of Swords, Lilius Adi. Livonian Werewolf, Nine of Swords, that's brutal. Yep, Bridget Bishop, okay, yeah, also brutal. Ten of Swords and Nine of Swords, intense. Uh, Page of Swords, Chief Leather Lips. Knight of Swords, Slav Polotsk. Lots of werewolves in here, cool. Queen of Swords, Lizzie Borden. Hmm, Lizzie Borden took an axe. She gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. That's the nursery, nursery rhyme. <sighs> Interesting. King of Swords, Rachel, Richard III. I would love, just going back to that, I would love to go to the Borden house and do an investigation. That would be cool. Ace of Wands, Roger Bolingbroke. Two of Wands, Antoine Court de Geblin. Three of Wands, St. Guinefort. One thing I will note, it is handy that we have the people's names at the bottom because one pet peeve I have around tarot decks, especially if they are of real people or real actors or real characters in shows or whatever it is, similar to in my review of the Jane Austen tarot deck, because it's an artist rendition, I don't know who it is and it doesn't say on the cards. You need to say on the card if it's an artist rendition and not a photograph. Anyway, these tick. Four of Wands, Nicholas the Second. Five of Wands, Jan Hus. Six of Wands, Nostradamus. Seven of Wands, Charles Bowanga. Eight of Wands, Saint Sebastian. Nine of Wands, Urbain Grandier. Ten of Wands, Margaret Aitken. That's an intense one. Page of Wands, Mervyn Tuchet. Knight of Wands, Joan of Arc. Queen of Wands, Marie Anne Lenormand. And King of Wands, Vlad Dracula. So these are cool. Um, they might be interesting to connect with in terms of their tarot meanings. But again, the reason we have lots of different types of tarot decks is because you can get different meanings from different decks and they can be good for different things. I can see this one as being a pretty brutal read. I can see this one as being really good in ritual and in workings for witchcraft. I think that could be really interesting, which I do use tarot cards for that. It could be really interesting for shadow work. There's a few things it could be good for. Definitely not a fluffy deck. All right, I'm gonna give the shuffle test. Shuffles fairly easily. The cardstock, upon using it, it's very thin. It's a very, it's weird because the deck itself feels thicker than a standard like playing card deck. Um, in terms of like a tarot level Rider White Smith deck. It feels thicker this way, this way. Um, it feels the same height wise, but the cards themselves feel flimsy. I don't like the cardstock. I don't like the cardstock. It's, um, the edges are sticky. It's like we've got cheap card cardstock with fancy edges. It's weird. They do spread really nicely though. So that is a bonus. They don't actually seem to chunk up a um, couple here, but that might just be from being new. It seems like they've separated pretty nicely. I'll try that again. Yeah, a couple like sticking in chunks, but I think with use that will actually change. Again, I think um, sticky edges like this doesn't help. All right, overall, not as wild and crazy as the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot, which is in itself a little bit disappointing, but also fine. Um, it looks cool. I'm interested. I like that he has a different, darker take on things. You guys might have noticed. I really like dark spooky stuff, right? I like things that are a little bit macabre and a little bit dark. It's just my vibe. I have a Scorpio moon. I will blame that. So I like the darker stuff. I like clever stuff and things that you have to think about or I can tell someone's thought about and how to do a lot of research. I can tell he's probably done that for here. Um, to give a thorough review, let me just say the guidebook is in color, which is nice. It is quite large, but the write-ups are not that large. Let me go to someone. Interesting. All right, three of pentacles. Oh yeah, they're actually quite tricky to try and flick through like this. Um, 
Is that the thickness? What is that? Why is it so hard for me to hold like this? What is wrong with me? Like, I play with tarot cards all the freaking time. I can tell when a deck is just not quite right. And the, the card stock in this is not quite right. All right, three of pentacles. Let's have a look at this dude. Christoph Heisman. So Christoph was a painter who performed a ritual invocation to summon the devil in 1666. He had been severely depressed following the death of his father, so he asked the devil to become his father fear. After the invocation, Christoph moved to Austria and found minor success with his painting career. His pact with the devil required him to surrender his soul in 1677, and he sought out a priest to perform an exorcism to help him break the pact. The exorcism was carried out in two sessions at a cathedral in Mariazell, Austria. Afterward, Christoph retired to a monastery. He painted a series of illustrations showing his encounters with the devil, but the originals were lost and only the copies remain. So the three of pentacles, again, this is just telling us about the person, doesn't tell us about the, the card itself. Um, but it's a, it does say here, the three of pentacles indicates artistic ability and skilled labor. I would agree with that. I also say it is a card of collaboration or teamwork. It can also mean fame and recognition for a person's work. Can it? Christopher Heisman never requested success or fame from the devil. He only wished to have his depression relieved. Once this had been accomplished, he was able to use his natural artistic abilities to prosper and earn a living. The three of pentacles may be suggesting the reader should utilize their artistic gifts. I associate wands more with artistic talents. Three of Pentacles, I say, is collaboration, teamwork. Um, I can see the artistic vibes there, but I see it less about the artistic creative talent aspect and more about the using it as a trade, right? Like, this is your trade, this is how you make your money, but you need to... Um, potentially bring someone else on board to, oh, this would work. Bring someone else on board to help you uh, level up or grow your business is kind of how I would use that. So I guess he did. He brought someone else on board, the devil. They made a pact. They had an agreement. They had a little contract, signed that, did some teamwork to grow his business. Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this, this is what surprised me about the other one, the Hieronymus Bosch Tarot is when I actually started reading it, and I don't want to spoil what the review is going to be like, when I've actually started reading it, some of the cards have had a really interesting reading to them. So, and this one, I guess, is the same, right? But from the image itself, I wouldn't have grasped that, but I know enough about it to not need that now, which is why I can have fun with these tarot decks. Uh, so if you are a beginner, I would say this is not the deck for you. If you are squeamish, I would say this is not the deck for you. If you are easily spooked, I would say this is not the deck for you. If you are a lover of the macabre, if you are a lover of history, if you are a lover of the occult, I think this is a really interesting deck and this could really work for you. If you like this video and you think someone else would like this tarot deck or this video as well, all the things that I do, please, please, please share it and definitely subscribe to the Witch Talks podcast. Keep an ear out. I have requested that Travis comes on and chats with me about his deck creation because I think it's really unique and it's different and I like that. So keep your ear out. I have some amazing guests scheduled for 2024 and you do not want to miss it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Boop, 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 boop.